And welcome everybody to the 59th Cash Knowledge Seekers Workshop. And we're going to start the workshop with our usual Cash Foundation Spaceship Institute promo video. This with the English subtitles this time around. Here we go. Where does humanity go from here? What have we tried to do? What if there is more, much more? The Keshe Foundation is proud to announce a new way to bring humanity forward through technology that brings humanity in line with the natural operation of the planet and universe itself. The new science and technology discovered and developed by the nuclear engineer Moran Keshe centers upon the use and control of magnetical gravitational fields. This new body of knowledge opens the road to hundreds of potential applications, which offer solutions to most of the fundamental problems of the world, such as water, food, environmental contamination, and shortages of energy. The Keshe Foundation is proud to unveil the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute. Nestled amidst the beautiful shores of Bari, Italy, the Institute is poised to become a central hub in the spreading of plasma technology and knowledge. With its state-of-the-art 21st century facilities, the Institute will be able to provide students and staff an immersive way to learn the plasma technology, to be the leaders of the new generation of scientists and plasma engineers. The Keshe Foundation has opened the door to the world for peaceful usage of technology that is independent of the limited resources that are available on Earth. This is an understanding of how everything works together in harmony in our universe, and it applies to everything from the smallest to the biggest, from atoms to galaxies. We all are able to collectively work together in pursuit of knowledge, innovation, and solutions for our society. This learning environment is new to the world, where there will be no test to confirm your understanding. The knowledge of everyone will be respected and allowed to flourish in a nurturing environment. Hands-on testing and experimenting will be widely used in conjunction with roundtable discussions to bring all opinions and knowledge forward. Students will be introduced to a change in the ethos of working in collaboration. Students will experience firsthand how we share knowledge in a free and open manner. Graduating students are expected to share the knowledge they gain from the university within their respective communities and nations. All formal teachings, lectures, and presentations will be in the English language, with technology available for immediate translation. Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute will be offering three-year executive master programs for undergraduate degree students and one-year executive master programs for graduate degree students in the following fields. Space Transportation, New Plasma Technology, Health, Agriculture, materials, energy. The health section is designed to make students able to live in space without the need to return to Earth. To this end, the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute has found processes for many diseases including ALS, cancer, coma, epilepsy, multiple sclerosis. Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute will offer online teaching courses which will enable anyone anywhere around the world to enroll and increase their knowledge and understanding. Students will have the opportunity to direct their work towards commercial spin-offs and seek funding through the help of the Keshe Foundation. The access to the new science and new technologies is openly available for peaceful use to the benefit of mankind to make a better world today. Now you can be part of the changing world and the new knowledge. All commercial spin-offs are intended to be open source and patent-free. This is part of the core ethos of the Keshe Foundation and the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute. Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute will have its official inauguration on April 21, 2015, with courses commencing soon after on May 4, 2015. The students of the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute will be the leaders of the future we will make changes in all areas of space technology, science, medicine, agriculture, and energy. 
anyone is able to apply, but acceptance is through invitation only. No prerequisites are required. We will be accepting approximately 250 students for the three-year Executive Master's program and 120 students for the one-year Executive Master's program. We welcome humanity's participation in the knowledge of the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute. Where does humanity go from here? That is up to you. Apply today. Okay, that was the promo video for the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute. And now we'll get into the main part of the 59th Knowledge Seekers Workshop. We'll have a look at um, a, uh, an animation from Jeff Reisner of uh, Plasma Division, it's called. And um, I'll have some other um, things to present here through the workshop and first we'll connect with uh, Mr. Kesh and see what's going on at the Spaceship Institute in Trani, Italy. Yeah, make sure we got a mic check there, Mr. Kesh, please. I'm okay if you're happy with it. Is this okay for you? It good. seems to be. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> good morning, good evening, good day to you, wherever you are, as usual, whenever you listen to the uh, workshop. Um, as you are fully aware, today is the first time we are um, having a workshop as a Spaceship Institute in Trani, and this is a major development for the Foundation Teaching Core, and in so many ways is a departure from what we used to do uh, in the Sansano, where today we will run a, try to run a live test before the teaching starts on Monday. So, you might be able to see how we teach today as a pre-run, and then we do a full run on Monday. The structure is very simple. We start every every day at 10 o'clock, or around about 10 o'clock, when we, we can wake anybody up, and everybody up. And then we go through abnormal way of teaching. <clears throat> Hello. Sorry, our camera crew is setting things up in the background. Um, the, uh, the structure is that we try to, for the first time, teach in the normality of the way we have taught for past year or so, in the SSI in the Sensano. Uh, you will see our teachings, you see our development, you see our mistakes, you see our faults, and you see the pleasures of being live with the Institute. On the other hand, uh, whatever you learn during the workshops, during the teachings, then you can put questions around the world, like tutorial, on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, in the in the other workshops. So we try later on during the teaching process to make the workshops interactive too, which means if what you learn in the morning, you can be part of the workshops live in the afternoon or part of the session when it's allowed to be done. So. It's very much interactive. We will all learn together, we will all make mistakes together, and we will all share success together. And uh, <clears throat> this is very unusual for a lot of teaching positions, but this is the way we've done. We, do, we are not afraid of failure, and we're proud to share our successes with everyone. There is an important notice which I have to, and I've been requested to declare our position. Uh, this is uh, not abnormal for us, but I've been requested on the request of my government, we declare the position of Iran and the Iranian nation in respect to the 5 plus 1. The Keshe Foundation accepts the total package of the peace treaty with 5 plus 1, 
it's exactly what we pledged and we wanted, that Iran stays as a nuclear country, with the right to develop and share knowledge. And the agreement made with 5 plus 1, is according to our request, and we accept the total package. This way, we have guaranteed the openness of the nuclear industry to worldwide and Iran as an industrial nation that can commercialize all aspects of the technology in partnership at equal level with the rest of the nuclear industry world like US, Russia, China and the rest. But the beauty of the, the agreement is that Iran has access to proliferation, development and commercialization, all divisions of the nuclear industry. And we welcome such a successful negotiations by Iranian team. On the other hand, as part of the negotiation has been the release of the plasma technology, which has been partially developed by the Keshe Foundation and released to the Iranian government and worldwide. We accept the share of the knowledge of the plasma technology with the hand of the Iranian governments too, which means all our knowledge in plasma technology will be shared internationally. And opening of the SSI as a teaching tool will be partially in time. We will share lectures with the Iranian scientists in different universities in Iran on plasma technology, as we will do with the American and the Russians and the Chinese. So, with this development, we make Cash Foundation the center for development of the plasma technology. Be careful with the women. <laughs> so, this is what we planned and we are reaching, achieving, as the successful signing of the agreement between the US government and Iran, on the development of the new plasma technology has been reached and has been part of the backbone of the agreement between 5 plus 1. On the other hand, in the coming time, as we requested in our, meet, in our mm, last week meeting, we request simultaneously from the Iranian government to release the space technology plasma, as they have received from the Keshe Foundation and developed it themselves, on an equal basis internationally. And I thank the Office of His Excellency, President Rouhani and Office of His Eminence Ayatollah Khamenei for the collaboration and cooperation with the Keshe Foundation and other nations around the world for deployment of the plasma technology. This is an official announcement on behalf of the Keshe Foundation and the Iranian nation and the government of Iran in respect to our position in the signing of the final agreement. Thank you very much. Now, going back to our teaching. We will try from next Monday to put in position that every aspect of technology is thought every day. So, but we try to concentrate on certain parts in specific days. Yesterday I spoke with Professor Luzzi and uh, what we have decided to do on the technical side is that all the health tests and equipments and whatever, we try to do it live, that you can see and you can understand. The, those who saw the presentation of Professor Luzzi last uh, Wednesday, in respect to the new medical system, this, in a way, you looked at it as a medical system, where, by application of the technology between electronics and the plasma technology, which we developed, and further next weeks will be developed further for a faster interaction, these systems will not only be used for health section, but in conjunction with a team which has been put together by Stanley, uh, Sohail and Wins and others in the background, <clears throat> in the coming weeks and months we will introduce the first zero-time communication through the same technology. This is not a departure, this is a development addition to the knowledge. 
the way we saw, uh, we use the machine to transfer knowledge through blood to uh, change or grow hair or change the condition with the health. The same system will be used for communication. Zero time communication, instantaneous communication, doesn't matter where your position, anywhere on this planet or beyond. Secondly, this transfer of information as a zero time communication, if you understand in a full package, as I explained to you, in a simple way to Professor Lutzi yesterday, will be used for what you call teleportation, but will transfer the full package. Um, the knowledge is in reach, we, I estimate within months, we should be able to show the first thing. And one of the reasons for this is, that as we explained in the um, opening of the Institute last Thursday, that we are looking through development of holograms, and the hologram pictures for teaching, if we can succeed to achieve what we think can be done very rapidly, because all the tools are in our hand, but you've seen it all, but you can't connect it, we show you how, then the teachings will be live instantaneously around the world, using our own technology of the transportation of the information through zero time and pictures and live presentation. And Professor Luzzi has developed this technology on the electronic side, we have to convert in a simple way to plasma, and then it's achievable instantaneously. On the other hand, uh, it has to be said that uh, we open the door of the health section in the coming weeks directly to public worldwide. What does this mean? <clears throat> you used to send us blood samples, blood tests. And half of these blood tests is connected, or 99% of it is connected to the matter state of the body at the time of illness. From now on, in the coming time, hopefully when Sohel builds his own little plasma cube, what do you call it, the spheres which we are waiting for, once they are treated in a certain position, in a condition we expect, you do not need to send us your blood sample test we need a sample of your blood, and other bits which we ask for. Arman is looking at me in a loss, what is going to say next? Because he's, he, he was there to get these little balls manufactured. Yeah, it is manufactured, he tells me. So what happened, when we receive your blood, we have access to you worldwide, with all the diseases you have, and what the physicians decide, that is wrong, or needs to be corrected, or be processed. So, while you are with your, for example, physician in his office, while we collaborate with them directly, doesn't matter where you are in the world, by receiving your blood sample in the condition we require, we can make the difference while the doctor monitors. This be it migraine, being mental disease or whatever. So, we bring the health to a central position time. This is needed as part of prelude to the space technology, where the passengers of the spaceships are ill with, it, with something which they cannot access to. And by keeping a blood sample on Earth, we can reach them instantaneously to supply and support them. We are not going too far, we've shown it here, a man, but he was like half a meter away, is reached. Now, we go in excess of distance and time. We have requested the first part, if it can be done, in a, what you call it, in the coming weeks. So, you can come to the SSI Center, Teaching Center, with a blood sample, fresh blood sample, we just need a pinprick of it, and another pieces which we announce. And then we can process this with, with, with scientists and the doctors present and you can monitor the change literally over hours and days and uh, weeks with your physician. Uh, as we said, once we open the institute, we open the door of knowledge, and this is as part of the opening of the total uh, communication, instant communication, instant transportation, and uh, instant health uh, 
what you call it, processing. We have a huge problem in achieving this development and this is, we need scientists who are experts in electronics, in plasma technology, in health and doctors who like to collaborate with us to monitor these things. Uh, as part of the ethos of the Keshe Foundation, we are blind to your political affiliances, we are blind to the color of your skin, your nationality, your race and whatever has created division in man. So, we allow you to bring whatever beauty you bring on the table of knowledge with us and we share it internationally. And yesterday I thank Professor Luzzi for his uh, uh, sharing of a knowledge with the system so openly last Wednesday. You have to realize that he has gathered this information over a lifetime and so openly he shares it. And this shows that we are not afraid of sharing knowledge openly. So, if you are electronics, plasma scientist, uh, medical doctor who like to help your patients, uh, join us that we can work together to rapidly complete the structure and uh, what I call the connecting all the dots on the table, that we can go forward with the next step. If you remember, we asked for funding for building the first spacecraft last year. Response to this was zero. Not many people, they would all like to go to the moon, but they don't like to pay for the ticket. So you're all, uh, what do you call it, uh, skyvers. You just want to, to take and run. So, in line with what we have said, and I've seen the incompetence of man in keeping to what he needs or what he's asking for, uh, stealing as usual, I have started raising funds in an appropriate way through different governments and nationalities and in time, in the next few weeks and months, we announced the amount of the pledges we received from different organizations, governments and eminent families around the political world of uh, public life. Uh, the, as the pledges converts into what you call uh, development and opening of different institutes and structures we announce and we give credit to the people who've done. We announced in the Chinese section this week that Mr. Hoi from China, uh, he was present in the meetings here. Without us knowing, he has set up the company for uh, Chinese part of the, what we call the industrial part, because Sohil will do the, what we call the white bear the household goods, uh, in cleaning uh, environment, cleaning air and pollutions, um, power generation and space, which inevitably will go to the Chinese government once we completed it. And the other aspects of the power and agriculture will be handled through the company which Mr. Hoi has set up. And he graciously has to, um, donated 49% of the shares of the company to the Keshe Foundation, uh, starting the Keshe Foundation in uh, Holland. In parallel with this, Mr. Hoy has set the direction to set up the Keshe Foundation Space Institute for China. We have to go with the parameters of what he and his team and the collaboration of the other people in China have put together or will put together for the Keshe Foundation to open up this institute. And one of the first parts is, as we announced in the Chinese program, is um, teaching of the Chinese scientists here in the institute to go back to China to start uh, teaching in the institute in China. So, hopefully we celebrate the opening of the Keshe Foundation Space Institute in China when we have our next meeting in next April uh, with them. And in that process, meanwhile, uh, what we do here, we start producing and commercializing um, the industrial part and as we done with Sohel, we transfer everything back to Mr. Hoy or any other organizations around the world who wants to develop it. The only way we see the progress is to open uh, our spin-offs here in Italy, that from the spin-offs directly other companies and nations can develop. To this effect, we have negotiated and we came to an agreement yesterday lunchtime in uh, positioning the Keshe Foundation as 
Keshe, Stichting the Keshe Foundation, with the research center in Italy. This allows us to open all the spin-offs within one building, allows us the space testing, we are not far from the sea, and it allows us to develop everything independently by the knowledge seekers who come here. So, we link one to another, and all the supports will be done here. We have acquired a 600 square meter open lab permit, uh, environment, which means all the people who run the spin-offs, all the laboratories is open on the same floor. So they can learn from each other and teach each other to uh, speed up the development of the different sectors. Um, this is a break away from the present uh, situation that everybody tries to keep a secret, uh, where in this process we don't keep a secret, we openly share. And at the same time, our camera crew here will install cameras on every lab, that if you want, if you're interested in nanotechnology, while they're doing the process, you can live watch what's happening. Uh, at the same time, hopefully, WINS will allow us to and make the facilities with the team of the Keshe Foundation education team, to be able to hold everything on the servers of the Keshe Foundation around the world as we develop them. I thank all of those who attended and made all the facilities for the last week uh, presentation and uh, allowing it to be able to happen. But we said what we are holding, we wait for the opening of the Institute and uh, even during the teachings uh, from next week, we might show things which are literally developed on, on what do you call it, on the shelves, on the tables in the Institute. Uh, we are developing, a, hopefully, a light system, which uh, should be seen in the coming time, if it's correct or not. Um, Marco is developing a system for weight reduction, if we can achieve it through, like, to be replaced with the shock absorbers, and that you can reduce weight of the vehicles. And as we achieve results, we will do it. If we don't achieve results, be sure that somebody on the Cash Foundation worldwide will add the knowledge and we achieve what we cannot do here. We are open to criticism, especially Marco. He goes red. And uh, we'll, with Armin, we try to support the other side. Uh, so, if you have knowledge you want to share with us and you want to uh, do it, instead of writing an email to me, or sending it to Webmaster, use the uh, teaching sections and the workshops to share knowledge, and if there is a problem, we learn and we can add to the knowledge ourselves, collectively. We cannot keep politics away from the Keshe Foundation. To this effect, time, in time coming, we will have one of the directors of the World Bank present with us. He's a uh, big supporter of the Keshe Foundation. He's a close friend, personal friend of mine. And he will be here to give us talk in direction of the financial, how and the way the Keshe Foundation will affect the World Banking. In time, we will have World Ambassadors here to give their opinion, as we did in the presentation of the opening with Colonel Hanke. Uh, James Hankey of uh, American uh, forces. And we, we have no problem in bringing the supporters of the Foundation, who are proud to be part of us. Now we open the Institute, is not uh, one man with my name, now is a worldwide institute belonging to the world humanity. So, you will start seeing world leaders, world ambassadors, and key personals in the world of uh, science, that they asked us, they want to come and make a presentation, or at least teach us from their side, that we can learn from them. These are the changes which is um, about, and is coming about. Uh, we have secured two or three ambassadors, which who are proud to be here. And in time, we might see some religious leaders, who do not mind to, translate the ethos of the belief of the man and its application in the space. Uh, this, this is one of the cornerstones of the Keshe Foundation work, 
unification in true sense of to the belief of the Creator without the color of the flag or direction of the bending and praying. Uh, so, this is what we can tell you at this moment and any further development will allow us to explain more in the time to come as we go along. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Keshe. That was uh, quite interesting. Um, questions? Any questions on the live stream there, Guy? And uh, does anyone have any questions in the Skype call? Or do I'm not sure if we have a go to meeting tonight. It's good morning. What do you mean tonight? I'm sorry. Um, morning, noon, night. It's, it's Have you still, recovered I, the jet lag yet, or are you still awake European time? I don't mind the jet lag, it's the, the jet uh, fuel that bothers me. <laughs> Have but, you recovered from it? Yes, more or less. I feel much, much better today than I did the day before. Oh, the day before. I can read you a letter that I got this morning that's um, um, quite interesting. Um, that was a a bit of an uplifting thing that helped get me into a, a better frame of mind than uh, when I first landed and felt quite ill. <clears throat> but um, the way it goes like this, I'll just uh, read it to you. Um, I got one letter in, in my mailbox over the last week and uh, no bills, so I thought that was a good thing. And But I didn't recognize who it was in the letter. It was in um, I'll just uh, give the initials MB, I'm not sure if they want their, their name particularly put out, but um, it goes like this. <clears throat> Mr. Crammond, we don't know each other, but I consider you and the knowledge seekers my friends. I thank you all from my heart and soul. All of you give so freely, it gives much hope. You knowledge seekers are changing the hearts of men, mine included. Your, your ancestors are most likely beaming with pride. Best of luck, Mr. Crammond. Matt. And um, he sent along a, a money order as well that uh, was very helpful this morning after my uh, uh, trip to Bari and so on. Is, uh, you know lots of expenses. And that uh, was just amazing to see that... Uh, in the mail mailbox this morning when I checked my mail from the week. Yeah, you went to see the Queen, so it's very expensive when you stay in London. Yes, well, especially for an extra day to look at postcards, yes. <laughs> Any other question? Um, what do we have there, Keith? We have... Um, <clears throat> question from uh, Foth, I think, known as Ed. How do you transfer the holographic images to the star formation? Will you do it yourself, Mr. Kesh? We don't transfer holographic. This is the change. Um, <clears throat> in the past few weeks, we saw the little tube power supply unit, which uh, Eric Clausen has done a different version of it. If you understood the work of the transfer of the plasma from matter, changing it to nano and then changing it to the GANS, and then receiving it as an energy of a GANS and then converting it back to the nano and then back to matter and taking as a electrical current measurement, then it should have been easy to understand that you do the same thing in the transfer of information and the transform of the structure. But you have, uh, the way you received the letter today in the envelope, the letter was in it and the bank order was in it. Doesn't matter what was written uh, on the letter, doesn't matter how many pages was in the envelope and how many pay orders you had in the envelope. The principle was that you received it in an envelope. 
So now the new space technology, with what we have seen, is we make a package, irrespective of what we put in the package. This goes back to the teaching of the plasma. Plasma has a mass irrespective of the environment where it is. It weighs differs, but its mass stays the same. So, we make envelope of what we want to transfer, we transfer the envelope. And what we need, we put inside it. One of the reasons teleportation has been a headache for the scientists up to now is that if they left a few cells of your body behind, then you won't have your arm when you arrive there, because the, the, the muscles of the tissues of the, let's say, upper arm was missing on the way. But when you send the package, and you contain the package, doesn't matter what happens, when the envelope arrives, the whole package is in there. The beauty with the system is that, you do not need another system on the other side to open the package. You give the precondition for opening to the package on the point of arrival. So in a way you self-open the envelope when you arrive. This way you can land on the destination in a long distance, without actually uh, having a system to deliver. These are important for uh, delivering of equipments, materials and technologies. It's important for positioning like what we have as satellites. We launch a satellite. For us to do a map positioning uh, of the total universal structure, we need to put very much like the satellite positioning, understanding the space plasma, which is a very dynamic. Here, with our present satellites, it's a static, nothing changes, because it's fixed to the phone and the, and the post, which sends the information. In the space, it's totally different. We have interaction of the huge plasmas, plasma fields. All this, in part of technology, has to be assessed. A prelude to this is how we do with the health section. With the health section, the water is a carrier, and once the water touches the lips, the information is, the energy is transferred. It opens itself up. So now, with the plasma technology, which we've seen with the Professor Luzzi, we transfer the energy, and the package of the energy, irrespective of who it is and what it is. Because, um, if you put 20 people in this room, they will not receive the information, the way it's transferred from the, what do you call it, from the system to the specific blood. So, this gives us a teaching of how to set systems up. As of uh, yesterday or the day before, uh, we have started putting a team to develop uh, the detection of the plasma's strength, uh, with the Stanley and other team as we announced earlier on. So, we start developing equipments, the knowledge, the know-how, and the final work of it, already in the past uh, few days. Uh, so, you don't do hologram transportation, you do real-time, real transfer. You might ask, what's the use, what's the need for a spaceship? The difference is, the time you arrive, is so instantaneous, you don't have the joys of enjoying the space. So, there are different applications for what it is, but it's part of the development. Um, the hologram transfer uh, is what I call obsolete, once you understand the package transfer. You can do it as we do in the, uh, in the bytes, but you can do it in the package, that the package arrives, you pre-package it. It's much easier than you do it as a, as a bits, as it's done with the communication today. Any other question? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Keshe, there was a... Um let me see if I can find it here, an article 
along those lines. I'm trying to visualize um, what it is that you mean by uh, by those uh, uh, um, packages, I guess you might say. So there's an article that came out a few days ago about magnetic RAM, the new kind of RAM with the... Um, get the picture up here it shows uh, it uses a, a metal oxide as a, uh, a barrier in between and a, a, a pinned ferromagnet and a free ferromagnet so it has magnetic states rather than electronic states uh, it's a magnetic memory cell essentially on the nano level and it <clears throat> and it can accumulate or be trained to detect data and not have to respond with zero or one immediately. It can um, basically deliver a package of data rather than a single uh, bit. Um, is this similar to what you were talking about? When you use a plasma, you don't rely on the vibration. You go into the magnetic field. And if you use nanomaterials, you're, you are partially in that state. Nano structures are halfway between man and the man and the beast. Because they still have a physical connection. When you have a cancer state, you are detached, you become as part of the other structure. So we work in a plasma than nano. Uh, the communication line is in a plasmatic condition. Uh, and nano material are plasmas, but they are in a way half connected to the matter state, because then we can see them in the absorption of all the field strength of the uh, human eye spectrum. It's a big difference between nanotechnology and matter and the plasma technology, and we work in the plasma direction. But uh, it's part of the structure, what you explain, but you have to be able to connect it. I explained to, um, I can't remember who it was, how, you know, the, 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 the Americans here last week, that we can do um, using nano layers as a means of transfer of information and energy without the matter. And I think it was Brad who says, ha, huh, we know somebody who can do it. So most probably the Americans are at it, trying to see how they can transfer information through nano layers. Maybe Brad can enlighten us more because he said he knows somebody who can do it. Interesting, thank you. Um, what do you have there, Guy? Or, uh, well, there's, a, there's different questions that came okay, up. Okay, there's some questions here. Uh, uh, there was. Can, uh, can Magrav fields deform or bend matter? Yes. <clears throat> matter is the weaker state, and if you have the right magrab state, yes, you can. It's a field force, it's a plasma force. This is part of what, um, in a way, uh, uh, we talk about bending of the light, when we see things. In uh, part of, I think, book one or book two, we, uh, we explain this. Because partially the light behaves as a, a particle, and partially be, light behaves as a plasma. If you read book number two, we explain that uh, light is a plasma, but in elongated uh, plasma than a, uh, than a, what do you call it, a spherical plasma in, the, in motion. And then, in part, part of the outer interaction surface of the plasma reaches matter state. And if that state in the outer part of the field of the ray, uh, what do you call it, plasma of the uh, light, 
reaches that matter, so the outside boundary behaves as a matter, but inside is a plasma. And depends how, which field has reached the strength in respect to its environment, then you can, yes, one bends. And one forces the direction of the motion of the other. So, yes, you can do, because we see it in nature. Um, Mr. Keshe, uh, I've been showing this uh, video a few times here of the animation from the animation team. I was wondering if we can get your opinion on it as far as um, these this um, these ratios and uh, the numbering system and the layering effect and whether it's accurate or needs work to um, to modify it. Um, different people have had input to it, and Jeff Reisner has come up with an animation. And I think it could be made into three-dimensional rather than two-dimensional quite easily, but I think they need to know whether the principles are sound or the uh, images are correct. Can, maybe we can, maybe you can help with that. I'll just play through the video here now. Let me get back to the beginning. Is this an um, expansion on what um, Nicholas was telling us last week, or a couple of weeks ago? Yes, I believe that the, um, they were collaborating in the, uh, in the animation group and came up with this as a way of visualizing it. So I'm wondering if that is... Uh, a way of approaching this, or is there a better way, or what can you suggest? In a, in a way, yes, because this is, but when you show this animation, you have to connect or add to the part where Nicholas was talking. Then it, it brings it into visualization. It's in a way, it's a structure of the division through the Reduction in one or the other of the two forces of magnetical or gravitational. If you look at this division, uh, it's very much like the structure of the life of a man. The bottom side is uh, the emotion and the top side is the physical. And wherever the balance is broken, it divides. And the division in the human life, we call it the death. But in fact, the division comes that the soul will take a new direction of his life, and the physicality goes in his own direction. Even though the particles of the physical still carry the soul, part of the emotion. So, this is um, part of the structure of the existence. Uh, but the souls, as they don't have physicality, they do not divide and the physical body of the man divides, or what we call it, decays. But every part of the decay, even though it might be absorbed by other entities, it still carries the essence of the creation with it. So, in so many ways, I answered this a few months ago, some times ago, is that if the bird eats a man, does the bird carry the soul of the man? the bird will carry the information carried in RNA of the man and adds to the structure of the bird. But, because they are of the different strength, bird cannot use it, so it doesn't gain intelligence. This is part of the structure. In the deepest space, we will see of the same order of the creation, where we are subordinates in the level of the knowledge, and in other points, we are the superior in the structure of the knowledge. But, by being part of one, or becoming part of the other, we do not change the structure of the other, but we just release what we have. And if it's useful, and is in the level they can use, it'll be done.
Is that one of the advantages of mankind, is that we're able to move from one level to another at times? Yes, you can. This is why the health workshop next week is about arm and leg. Because you look as a motion, uh, with the physicality of having arm and leg, but you can actually move in a different dimension without the use of arm and leg, because the man is so physical. Okay, are you still there, Mr. Kish? Sound like yes, I'm okay. waiting for Sorry. the next question. All no right, problem. great, thank you. Um, let's see, what do we have here? Okay. Um, the father asks, uh, how do you get the package of the receiver's RNA? By willingness? By, by will, if I may ask, by willingness? How do you get the package of the receiver's RNA by willingness? Um, Explain you, yourself. Well, I think Armand can answer this. You, you, I Bic, gave the knowledge this morning, he couldn't stop laughing about it. <laughs> You, Bic, uh, makes a, uh, who is uh, Richard, makes a comment, uh, uh, RNA is our emotional recorder. You are what you do. It will channel your MagGrav field. What you do, uh, what do you want it to do? Does that make sense? In a way, yes. In a way, no. But still, we need more clarification what he wants to know. Because if you let me loose in that direction, you'll have a whole week me talking about it, because it's very important. Sounds like a book. <laughs> <laughs> Is that in book number seven, eight, or nine? <laughs> I don't know, it more fits in number 8, which is the origin of the magnetic field, but we have to wait and see. The way we are going with teaching, the book will never be written. I don't have any other time. The um, RNA carries the free, unconditional information, which for its existence to be able to be transferred, needs the physicality of DNA. In a way, you play a song. If you record it on a CD, or you record it on a video film, in fact, it does not make any difference. You carry the sound, you carry the music. So, in so many ways, you cannot change the RNA. You can only change the physicality of transfer of the, what do you call it, the information. You can use, and in time man will see that you can use the same RNA, but in different environments you will get a different DNA and different structure. But because of the similar environment, you will reach the condition of the environment to survive, to give tangibility to the information on RNA. I explained this about the crab shoe, some times ago. We carry the knowledge, we carry the information, but in, for it to fit into the physicality environment of the planet Earth, they get a diversion, they get a physicality information. Maybe the crab shoe, in its RNA, in its own environment, would have had 20 legs and 50 eyes. But, the RNA transfer to the physicality condition of the gravitational magnetic field of the Earth allows it to manifest itself in this dimension, in this structure. Um, there's so, a, there, there's a question me, right there. Is, is uh, evolution fractal structured? Is that what you're talking about? Is it a fractal, fractal structure? Explain yourself. Um, fractals being something that splits off into other smaller um, replications that 
look to be of itself on a, in a scalar way so that uh, it's hard to tell what the scale actually is because everything looks similar from a fractal point of view. I don't know if that makes sense exactly. Um, you have to understand you're all illiterate. You have to educate us with a word. <laughs> yes, well... It's, it's uh, like being in Italy, they say yes, but they don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> so... <laughs> well, I... You say yes, but explain yourself. I try to get a dry cappuccino in Italy. It seems like a very simple thing because that's what they're famous for. But uh, nine out of ten times, they didn't get it right for me in spite of saying yes, yes, yes. So... <laughs> I know what you mean by that. Um, so explain what you mean that we all understand, and when we answer, it's the correct answer. Right. Okay. So, um, fractal is like a tree branch or leaf, self-repeating structures. Um, is that how the packages are? are um, I think the question is. This that is how the way the DNA works. works. Yes. Yes, okay, now you explain it, you, everybody understands what you mean. It, it, this is how the universal system works. You, that's how every cell, if you have a DNA from the saliva or the muscle tissue of the leg, you still get the same human being, same structure. Because it does, it's replication, it's just like you make a master CD and you copy as many times. Depending on how the energy gravitational magnetic field of the RNA is played, where it's played, according to the environment where it's played, it becomes a heart tissue, one becomes a bone tissue, one becomes the muscle tissue of the arm and the rest. But the actual recording is totally the same. This is what I explained just a few minutes ago. When we send the RNA, it depends how you manifest yourself or the entity will manifest itself according to its environment in the destination point. So here we need two arms, two legs and two eyes. If we send the human RNA with the information carrier for uh, tangibility, you might have uh, 30 legs and no arms because you need to run fast but you don't need to collect anything, because you collect the energy with your legs. This is exact copy of what your body does. RNA is the same, but in the point of the field environment, it converts to the matter state in that point. So, the muscle, the, the cell, become the cell of, let's say, as I said, the heart or the eye or the rest. It's the environment which dictates the manifestation. So, yes, you do divide, but equally the same. And then the environment allows it what to become. And then this raises the question, are the human beings from this planet? Or have we become replicated to become two legs and two arms? Alma looks deeply. Oh my God, which planet did I come from? You see, if oh, you my have heard... Oh, my microphone isn't on there, sorry. Yeah, we can I hear you. That. I missed that on the live stream. <laughs> the idea no. being that uh, our bodies have uh, hundreds of thousands, at least, uh, atoms that have passed through uh, bodies of others, and if they were perhaps enlightened teachers, perhaps those atoms could be special, or maybe not. Um, in any case, uh, we have a, quite a mixture of... of atoms inside of ourselves that actually 
uh, we can't really claim them to be ourselves because they just recirculate and uh, and you know continue on as they last for billions of years, whereas our physicality doesn't seem to last quite that long. Let's say. Uh, this goes back to two points. Sometimes ago, I was explaining this to a religious guy, and he got so confused that uh, I think he, religion for him became a big headache. All of us, doesn't matter where we are and where we sit, if you understand the total structure of the physicality of the transfer of sound, and we have lived on this planet, our ancestors lived at the time of, let's say, Christ, we all have received through our ancestors and within the structure of this planet, the energy of Christ, blessed is his name. If you go to England and you go to Birmingham, I think it's still there. North of Birmingham, there is a station where they listen to every single click and clack on this planet. Every radio station is heard, is listened to. I can't remember its name. I used to pass it every week when I went from Manchester to London. It's a huge network. And every north, pardon? No, no, it's north of... Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, our, our first knowledge seekers, our, uh, they were in so hurry that they arrived a few days earlier, so they're here with us in, 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 uh, in the center. Welcome. We'll talk with you on Monday, you can introduce yourself. Uh, of course, as you know, they're Americans, and they're welcome. We, are, we welcome everybody in this table. So, what it goes, and the way I explained to this religious leader, which shocked him that he has heard the voice of Christ as much as he heard the voice of Muhammad, that's his name, is that if the English um, communication center could pick up the smallest noise in New Zealand, then they shout the cry, and the uh, prayers of Muhammad, bless his name, and Christ, bless his hope, have been heard by every man who has been alive at the time of their life. And if it's heard, it's been registered in our DNA, in our RNA. So, if we come to the point of being the descendant of the men who were alive and present on this planet at the time of their life, we all have heard and registered in the call in subcon on subconsciousness in our RNA. So, when we established the core team and we said to pray for the soul of the physical soul of the Prophet and the Presidents, it's because through the same channel you reach them, because you heard the voice and not the essence. You did not translate the essence. So that's how your common line communication is established. In so many ways, as we say, you feel if the child is in pain in New Zealand and the mother is here is in Italy, because of the line of connection. But at the same time, the structure of this planet allows the hearing, the voice, the cry. This is why a lot of people, the last breath they take, they call the God or the Mother, which to them is the Creator. So, in a way, the name of the Mother is the Creator. We change it to identify the physical creation, or we call it the God in a spiritual dimension. Uh, so, as much as we have and we hear, does not matter, we, we see our great-great-grandmother in dream, when we dream, through the connection of the soul, we have the same access to the soul of the Prophets of the past. Because our ancestors have heard their voice being present, or through the voice of their calls across this planet. And then it's been transferred to RNA to us, but as everything else, we do not recognize, because we have no connection with. And the same, we will pass this information to our children. At the same time, as I explained to the core team when they were here, 
as part of their job, as part of their connection, they work through the soul of the man, not through the physicality of the man, because their physicality teaching has not brought, and has brought nothing but war and conflict between men. So now, the job of the core team is to reach the soul of every man, to be in balance, that we can achieve world peace. They know their task, and they are, I, I explain to them how they can start practicing to reach every man's soul. So, the core team as a whole, the Keshe Foundation core team or the core team, will reach the soul of every man on this planet, once they wish to. And then this is a part of the process, to change the RNA in a peaceful thought, and then we change the structure of humanity in a peaceful manner. Any other question? Uh, yes, I have a question. Um, can the soul of the man, like you were just saying, and the RNA be changed through the breath in terms of nanoparticles that get inhaled, let's say? And would that be a way of doing it, in terms of... Um, uh, you cannot change the soul of the man. You, thou shall not steal. Right, you can okay. so As I explained, you can ask for a, for a, a elevation of the soul of the man, through the correct conduct of physical behavior of the man, where the energy from the physicality through emotion adds to the soul and elevates the soul. This is the status of the Prophet of God. Okay, like... A man, a man cannot elevate his own soul to achieve superiority. If you can convert part of the energy, even by eating nanomaterial, which is in the plasma, or eat a bunch of ganses, the extension or addition to the structure of the physicality as a plasma will be shared amongst the others according to the will of the man. At a physical level. Okay, so if you receive, let me let me explain okay, expand on this. If you give the soul as a prayer to a prophet, you give a, in a sort of totality addition to the mass of the believers in the extension of the life of the prophet. But when you give praise to a man you reach the state of the man at the level of what I call uh, the emotional side, which does not touch the, uh, the soul of the entity, but adds through a balanced condition to the soul of the man. I explained this on the passing of the Diana, and when John Paul passed. It's one of the first times we saw, we, we saw international mass uh, emotional feeling, towards the two. Happened within few years from each other. In the case of Diana, the receipts of the emotion was totally different as an individual than the one which they gave their souls to pray the John Paul when he passed away. I explained this to uh, a religious leader. Did John Paul receive all the praise which was given by the soul of the people who prayed for him. I said no, and I have a very good reason. Did Diana receive more than Jean Paul? Maybe yes. Jean Paul was aware of the misconduct of the priest at the time of his rule. So he became part of the structure of misconduct. So Whatever was given by men on the passing of Jean Paul as part of their soul, is given to the ones who suffered were stolen from their souls by the abuse of the priests. Did this elevate the station of the church? No, it devaluates it, because all the priests are part of the same structure. Did Diana carry more, where people were present at her funeral, or bless her soul at the passing. Maybe she received more than Jean Paul. But we are not aware of a misconduct of her, in the way, if she has, she stays in the same position.
they carry less on passing than actually more that they receive. Because they have to fulfill and re replace what has been stolen or taken away. These, as they always say to me, stick to the physics and science, not to the religious. But when you speak about the plasma, and understanding of the structure of the universe, you understand you cannot separate the two. The way we talk about the, as I always say, about the physics and making plasma, for you have to have free energy, you have to understand how you can live a free soul too. And there is a structure to it. Any other question? Uh, <clears throat> I was hoping that Mike... Um, uh, Do we have anything to learn? Anybody is sharing any knowledge with us? I was hoping that Mike Nasmith might show some of his... Uh, Stuff here. I'm not sure whether he's available or not. If someone can direct me, that would be useful. Or um, we could also What's this show. drawing on the table? What is the what picture we see on the live stream? Right. This is uh, uh, some of Mike's uh, work, who was on some of the previous Knowledge Seekers workshops, and. Um, uh -huh. It was on the the live stream and just uh, discovered it and thought he might uh, uh, perk up about it here. I'd have to invite him into the workshop, perhaps. I'm not sure if he's around. So uh, if anybody can help with that, that would be useful. Uh, let me see here. Do we have a mouse for this one? We used to have a mouse for this. I used to have a mouse for this one. For the, the black one. No, it's okay. Is there anything you'd like to demonstrate on your magical blackboard there, Mr. Kish? <coughs> no, but maybe Marco would like to share something. Ah. Ah. He's, he's building a, what I call like a shock absorber. Oh, it's a star formation. And we shown it in the presentations last week. Uh, it's gone on what I call active duty since yesterday. And he's running. He has chosen opposite to what we've done on the speed of rotation. I'll, I'll give the headphone to him. He has his own logic. He's going very uh, slow. We, we usually go very fast in the speed of rotation of the reactors. Let him explain a little bit. He's got to learn how to teach, so you can start today. And I just got word that uh, Mike isn't prepared today. He's um, in trouble with uh, some audio issues. So uh, maybe next time he'll be able to demonstrate his uh, his devices that he's been coming up with recently and being inspired by. Okay, Marco, are are you in there? Um. Yeah, I'm here. Um. For people who are here last week. Uh, you have seen this system. Uh, I'm using these small reactors that uh, Chinese supporters uh, sent to us a few weeks ago. These are very, very tiny small reactors. Um, the diameter of the reactor is about one centimeter in uh, inner diameter. So uh, it goes a very little amount of guns inside. And I, I have put this reactor again in a star formation. Three reactors in the base and uh, another reactor at the, at the top. Um, so all these reactors are in a, in a chamber, plastic chamber, which is nano-coated. 
and on top uh, of uh, this chamber is another chamber and on bottom again another chamber which will be uh, used for the vacuum so um, all all this setup setup is prepared to 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 be used in a vacuum condition um, we don't know exactly at this moment uh, how the motors will work inside the vacuum so the other possibility is that we don't go very deep in vacuum and but slight vacuum and optionally optionally we put uh, some other gases inside like hydrogen or maybe even others um, when I was testing these reactors a few I think about two weeks ago just to see um, the Uh, direction of rotation. Um, I was doing this uh, on the table and uh, just next to me there are, there are these uh, magnetic field detectors and uh, when I started it was interesting that uh, um, the fields uh, that we are monitoring uh, in our um, star formation that is, that, is, uh, that is in the lab, uh, the fields increased. So that's, that was very in interesting indication. Um, so now, now this yesterday uh, I put this setup, this uh, reactor setup in um, between other reactors in um, in the lab, and now they are running. Uh, we are trying to use very low speed, as we were talking a few weeks ago that with the lower speed we increase gravitational field. Um, when we rotate high speed, um, friction of the guns release uh, release fields which oh uh, I'm sorry uh, <clears throat> so uh, yeah maybe you can uh, the new students don't hear me <laughs> obviously I'm uh, not speaking loud enough. Um, so when we are rotating uh, these guns inside the reactors, we release fields and uh, when the rotation is uh, uh, high, uh, the speed of rotation is high, then uh, all the fields are spread around and uh, we more add to magnetical fields. That's why uh, I choose in this setup to start with very slow rotation. Uh, in this way, we add more to gravitational fields which are uh, which are uh, gathering in the center so in a way uh, we are starting to to create our free plasma inside of of uh, this star formation and in, in further tests we will use also uh, vacuum inside this uh, this setup um, Yesterday it was interesting also that we put another system uh, uh, which uh, Dr. Antonio, Italian scientist who joined us a few weeks ago, uh, he, he has built his uh, setup again with same small reactors but in different con configuration. He used only two of um, these small reactors one in the bottom, one on the top, and they're looking against each other. And uh, according to his understanding, he's rotating one clockwise, one 
anti-clockwise. And yesterday we have very, uh, very interesting discussion with uh, Armen, Antonio, and me in the lab, and he was explaining um, his understanding because he already achieved uh, levitation and flying with uh, Mercury system. He was using, uh, I think, uh, about 15 years ago, uh, mercury in his reactor. Um, but uh, in his reactor, it was not full of mercury. It was mercury and uh, and air. Uh, so, um, according his observation with his system with mercury, um, he was rotating one of the reactor, let's say, uh, bottom reactor um, clockwise and the top anti-clockwise. Um, so he, he created um, some kind of interaction um, with this different um, direction of rotation. And uh, with his system, with Mercury, he he achieved this levitation. So, in uh, now he's using Gans reactors again. He's um, he's rotating one clockwise, one anti one anticlockwise, and. Um, Sorry, that is 17. Um, excuse me, I'm just uh, having a small talk with Mr. Cash. He, he just came from the lab. Um, system was switched off. Okay, um, uh, Mr. Kerr just gave me the last uh, reading from the uh, magnetic field detectors from the lab. So actually, what uh, what he he was trying to explain to us, Antonio, he was trying to explain to us that uh, uh, we should um, we should use different. Uh, um, Different rotations, so different uh, direction of rotation. If you, according to his uh, explanation, um, if we rotate only all the reactors in one direction, we achieve stable condition. Like for um, when we achieve some certain position, then. Uh, to maintain this position, we we should rotate all the all the reactors in the same direction. But when we would like to uh, to uh, to move in a, from one position to the others, he proposed to use different uh, direction of rotation. Um, when he he has done his test with mercury, um, he could not achieve any any uh, change in uh, uh, of the position of his reactors when he was rotating both reactors in the same direction. But when we when he changed one of the uh, um, direction of rotation of his reactor then he was able to achieve levitation. So, he, according to his understanding, the same should be with, uh, with Gans reactors. So, if this helps to, to anybody with his um, tests, 
it would be very helpful. Maybe Mr. Cash can. Um, uh, no, <laughs> he doesn't want to comment. <laughs> <laughs> want you to carry on, I guess. <laughs> it's um. Well, if you have any other questions, yeah, on the, let's come up here. Uh, well, according to my understanding, when you create free plasma, free plasma again rotates, uh, decides its own speed of rotation. So, it's a question with uh, with. Um, Reactors do we uh, influence to to the rotation of free plasma? And is this, there uh, more than one rotation? Maybe one in one direction and a counter rotation in the other direction, similar to the the video we've been watching with the multiple layers that are going one way and the other way and the other way again and so on. Um, Yes, yes. Uh, a sort of a pine cone effect of uh, magnetic layers might be <clears throat> more appropriate. So it's, it's, it's somewhat difficult to visualize. But as Mr. Kesh was saying, there would be a difference in the magnetic and the gravitational. And that would, uh, that would be something that if we can measure those accurately, then we would have a handle on where the fields are and what they look like. Mm. Yeah, this will be helpful. Um, even if you look at uh, at the Earth, Earth has like two um, two cores, inner inner core and outer core, and interaction of two magnetic fields. Uh, creates gravitational field, and that's uh, also the idea uh, in the background of the of the Antonio reactors. Uh, so, uh, the first reactor that this uh, um, white reactor that was shown in a, on the internet a few times um, that uh, the reactor that Mr. Cash developed in Iran. It has two cores, uh, inner and outer core, and interaction of two uh, fields, uh, inner and outer, creates this uh, this gravitational field. Then, and and that's also idea of of Antonio. So he is rotating uh, in two different direction, and uh, these two fields, when they interact, they create plasma. Which has property of, of magnetical and gravitational field. Any comment? No, I wasn't here, so we're listening to it tonight, and then I'll tell you tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is the new I way. Was, I was getting a coffee and tea. I'm a tea lady at the moment, so um, I will. Uh, I will repeat in, uh, in a shorter way. Antonio is rotating his reactors yeah, I one. I was just joking. I just... So um, the the principle is that. Can you? As uh, we said before, um, it, the the principle of uh, rotation and the speed of rotation is in what you're expecting of the system. If you go with a higher speed, uh, if you go with a higher speed, you can, uh, you can go and produce fragments. If you go with a lower speed, you collect mass. Let me explain this before. So, in a way, you, um, uh, with the system of uh, Dr. Antonio, we go high speed, and with the process of Marco, we collect what is uh, 
uh, shredded or what is being created from the fraction. So the two work together. In a way, we should see through the two monitors we have on the stand. We try to get a camera there sometime in the future. <coughs> As we did in the Sansano, we could see the lab. Is that the one set is producing and in high friction between two plasmas of the uh, upper and lower uh, reactors, we create a free plasma very rapidly, but this releases a f huge amount of fragments. And the reactor which is built by Marco is in a slow pace, so it adds mass to itself. And in this way, you uh, see <coughs> the increase in the totality of the uh, mass of the system, where we have put one system, Antonio's system, on a scale, we will see any weight difference, where Marcos is hanging on a, on a tripod. We have not marked the tripods, maybe we have to mark the tripods on the floor to see if the mass creates expansion in the tripod. And then we'll see if the case holds. We have to mark a lot of things, but now the system is on there. We follow the progress as we've done and then we we'll let you know. The, the, the most important thing is with the set which uh, is now, and in having these very light reactors, it allows us to test parameters which we could not do before. At the same time, the set of the Antonio sitting on the scale has got wheels on, so it can rotate or move if the field forces are bigger or smaller in respect to the reactor which is sitting from Marco's side. But in total, in the average, the whole fields of the lab which some, what, how many is there, about 10 different reactors running in there at the moment? Uh, everyone is participating in the, in the mass absorption or interaction. So, we have a huge plasma condition in the lab, we see it. And uh, in time, it'll be very difficult to measure individual plasma performance on this is immense, because other plasma, other reactors will extract the energy or add to it. Uh, this will give us a, what do you call it, the measurement of the magraph of the lab, and then any changes which will come on will be due to the operation or effect of the others. You see in the pictures of the reactors, the gas reactors, plasma gas reactors are on the floor, <coughs> the big flying machine is on the floor, the um, Star formation, original star formation, 129, I call it, is on the floor. We have the other one on the floor, which Armand made, and now we have two more sets. So, it's a combination of what sits everywhere. But we'll see with this combination, the interaction of the all three. Okay, what else have we got here, uh, Guy? Any questions from the uh, live stream now? Or from the uh, Skype call? Um, we can do. This nano coated and show as well if we can free up some space. I think the Chinese uh, workshops are more organized than us, huh? We gotta get organized. Uh yes, uh, I need to find more more input for these workshops from people who are actually experimenting. We have um over I, I think about fifty people in the plasma reactor group but um, we're not seeing a lot of 
participation in terms of new um, adding to the teaching kind of experiments. So we need to push a little more in that direction, I think, with maybe some new forms of sensors and new kinds of experiments to um, there is a, push things a bit. There is a guy who has done some experiments with the... Sorry, we lost you there, Mr. Kesh. Uh, could you give that to us again? Experiments with... Oops. Totally cut off. Mr. Kesh, are you there? You're cut off and uh, we can't hear you right now. Uh, it looks like it's dropped. Looks like we lost the SSI. We could ship SSI. Lost in the sea of the internet. Okay. Um, Sorry, I'm in the background, and of course, as everybody understands, is uh, we've all been fairly busy setting up the the institute and uh, getting this stuff all ready for everybody. So us being our usual experimenters haven't uh, been having time to be able to do that just like everybody else. Um, so yes, we would like other people to step forward while we take care of the... Um, the other things that are taken care of in the background so that we can have things presented and add to the knowledge. Um, and I see we have Mr. Cash back. Yes, I think somebody kicked the cable somewhere. Um, have you announced what you told me this morning, uh, Vince? Or you still want to hold back? No, we'll hold back because I'll I'll talk to you after about it. But uh, it should be very very soon. That's for sure. Now you told them. Do you want to tell them what is going to be very soon? <laughs> okay, so time? I'll I'll let you guys know. It's the uh, the PDF books uh, for book one, two, and three will be available on the Cash Foundation site uh, for a download. It is a secure download, as in you'll be able to download the file for free. And be able to do a preview of the of the book about five or eight pages, and uh, if you'd like to purchase the book, then you just have to purchase an activation key, uh, which will open up the rest of the book, which is a secure system. Um, but yes, all three books will be available in the near future. We'll, we will uh, plan to have uh, the different languages of the books available as well. Um, as well as both versions, uh, the first version that uh, will be available right away and the second version which will be coming up here in the coming weeks. Mm, I think it's time to explain something very simple. As we are expanding, different uh, sections of the foundation is getting developed like the internet, the teaching, the, the research, the light section and the heavy section of the application, industrial section. Uh, same time the space uh, section. Um, so, uh, as we expand, uh, now that we open this uh, institute and very soon, we invite you to the Cash Foundation Research Center. Uh, it's on its own, it's a spectacular, I, I was there yesterday. Um, it in a way allows us to do all this, all the what do you call it, research of different aspects with different teams in one building. Uh, we have something like 60,000 square meter of land. We can do all the test flights. We have a huge auditorium, much better facility than here. We have facilities to do four languages translation live. Um, in the auditorium and um, teachings and everything else is on the same ground. Um, they still is within the uh, environment of the Bari area that um, we can do the research and education more together in one, what do you call it, one, in one area of the, uh, the country. <coughs> so, from now on, Wins uh, will inform you whatever is happening in regard to the websites and the servers and what is to be released. 
and then we have a section which is hopefully we have um, uh, one of the knowledge seekers who will be knowledge seeker in the morning and the teacher and the researcher in the afternoon we know him as Stanley and he is from uh, Slo the Slovenia uh, somehow we're gathering a lot of Slovenians here, uh, Marco, and um, there is a possibility in the long run we'll see uh, that section adding to the space uh, space side too. And then we have the section which goes to the medical side heavily with uh, Professor Luzzi on the practical side of, and then the teaching side of the health section. So, as we saw Dr. Elia doing the health section, now we are spreading everything into its own part. And once we receive, we achieve a position with the situation with other problem position for the Keshe Foundation, we have a gentleman called the um, Guy who will head the agriculture part. He's done most of the research a long time ago. And he will join us in doing the agriculture. He has a huge knowledge. We have done the first agricultural paper with him that hopefully we publish it this coming months or weeks. Any other questions or shall we call it a day? Because we'll be teaching every day from now on, nothing will be new. But the teaching from Monday, we start from zero. We, we, we assume that we know nothing. So, you mean like from book one or some uh, before different phase? One. Before book one. Pre book one. Pre book one. The, uh, and then as you, as you like, you can join the sessions as part of the Knowledge Seekers on online. Great, that sounds wonderful to start from the basics. Basics. First of all, the, the, the one of the things which we made a mistake, a huge mistake, in the Sansano when we opened the Space Institute, as I said before, we assumed, or I assumed, that uh, the knowledge seekers had a good idea, they read the books. And then I found that not, some of them haven't even read the books. They were there just because they wanted to be there. And then, this is what made me to run fast with them into the lab, and a lot got left behind and seeing a screwdriver was too much. So we had to stop. And they, they, they wanted to leave, because gluing was a hard work. And uh, putting things together was impossible, because they didn't have the physical understanding of the working. So what we tried to do here, we spent at least three months in the, in the teaching, that we understand what they understand, and we understand, they understand what we understand, and then we start a ground to work. Uh, if anyone like Dr. Antonio or Stanley, of different level of uh, work in the research, they set up their own site and doing the research as part of the workshops. And, but they have the thing is they teach at the same time. So, uh, in time, Stanley will, explain uh, what you call the working of the uh, detection systems and the, what they are trying to set up that other scientists around the world can help us all develop their own ways. So we go on a, we go on a pace of actually first all getting to a ground level and then we start walking in the way which we like. Okay, looking forward to that, Mr. Kesh. Okay, maybe you'll we be on duty every day, Rick. <laughs> it's that way already, and uh, I'm looking forward even more so. <laughs> if you want, I'll send you a couple of matchsticks to keep your eyes open. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you know, it's uh, part of the way of service that we end up uh, doing the best we can in that regard. So, and. I know you don't get a lot of sleep yourself as well, and uh, with the family and uh, uh, multiple things you have to handle, it's um, 
amazing that uh, you get as much done as you're able to. So thank you I've very much, told, Mr. Cash, by the told, way. Thank you, you, I've been thank told you very much for, uh, for all your yeah. hospitality and all your, your wonderful uh, words of wisdom and uh, the, the group that you've gathered around are just an amazing bunch of people actually so it's it's been quite an experience and I highly recommend anybody to apply for as a student to the to the Spaceship Institute um, either going there or online they're both both going to be um, very interesting experiences and being on the ground floor it gives you a chance to actually participate in in the forming of all this at the same time because you know it's a it's a cooperative process so anyway I just want to put a little plug in there it's a, a beautiful <laughs> facilities I in the, the way you describe the research uh, Institute is even better than uh, then that's uh, amazing yeah, the Research Institute is um, is in a way allows anyone with um, uh, what do you call it and, uh, line of thought of adding to the knowledge in practicality or at least um, different aspects of the application. We, as we promised, we give them the the what do you call it the ground to to start. So, what you call in the present university level, a spin-offs. We build the building for the spin-offs, but within the structure of the uh, institute. You don't need to go and look for finance to start a spin-off, find a place. Everything is in one place already. If, you, if the thoughts and the intention is correct, we create the facilities for it. So, we have facility now for at least 10 spin-offs immediately to come through and uh, the foundation as have found the place now creates a facility uh, in a way <clears throat> we've done that with Stanley he is a student in the morning and we have financed his spin-off to develop the system for the control of the uh, what do you call it um, the plasma measurement of the plasma so he, as we said, he received the scholarship through the office of Sohail. But in the afternoons, he's a, a spin. He works as part of the spin-off, which he sees that the part. So he he works in two directions. In the afternoons, he teaches in a way in what they are gathering together to develop. So it's never been done before, but the science is so on the edge of um, development. Uh, so the knowledge seekers become the teachers, the spin-off, and the developers of their own, uh, what, is it, what do you call it, the speciality. So uh, not only we have set up the, we, uh, what do you call it, uh, system to learn, at the same time, because most of the people who are here with us are already the learner, they are the specialists in their own field. So, we, they use their speciality to add to the knowledge in a practical way. The same way as once we understand or we can translate the knowledge of Dr. Antonio, we, he will be doing the same because he understands gravitational fields in a different way and language should not be a barrier. We have a gentleman here who will translate his uh, workshops. And, and um, I... Our whole, his eyes, it'll be very difficult, but yes, we understand. <laughs> Marco says yesterday there was no translator but somehow we understood each other <coughs> knowledge I said this to somebody very recently the knowledge of Cash Foundation is the knowledge of love you find some way to share it so you don't need to to speak the language so we we'll see how we do it I mean we are achieving it not bad here at the moment in a good way Yes, and Guy has a lot to uh, speak about on that topic as well, and uh, we're talking about the idea of maybe creating a special workshop with uh, Guy's presentation that could maybe uh, jumpstart a new sort of um, aspect of the teaching. 
it's if you really, have an idea, sorry, carry on. Uh, it's really the core of uh, the, my presentation, actually. It was to talk about um, what I call my two mountains, which is uh, being good of heart and being smart with science that we learn from you, Mr. Cash. Oh, we all learn from each other and so we inspire each other in different ways. I'm still waiting for your presentation. You disappeared I, very fast. Yeah, he's building up on it here and has it has it very close actually just, and it, just has to put some final touches on, I think. Yeah, you just make me work a little harder on it and I put more images and I don't know, there's gonna be a lot of passion behind it and I hope everybody's gonna enjoy it. It's gonna bring uh, maybe a little uh, different quality uh, to uh, <clears throat> because I'm not much of a scientist, I'm more much more of a philosopher. I had quite special spiritual experience in the past, and uh, I think I discovered something quite incredible. And 20 years ago, I thought about writing a book and all this, and uh, and uh, now I think that it pretty much linked with um, what I consider my research with. Um, with uh, the new science, I call that my two mountains, the mountain of the heart and the mountain of the mind. And uh, if Which I can one put is the two together... To Sorry? Which one is harder to work on? Uh, right now, the mountain of science. <laughs> it's quite a steep one for me. Uh, I never had really a background in physics and chemistry and you know, uh, but I always been absolutely attracted by science fiction and 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 all that you know science that seems to be cool and plasma this and plasma that. But now I'm uh, many years later that I read a lot of articles, uh, scientific papers, and uh, even though I don't have much of a knowledge, I got lots of understanding because I I I'm an autodidact or let's say a self taught person. I read a lot. And uh, w with Rick uh, with, and other people, we're having an extraordinary conversation. I learned a lot through this. And uh, I got a very special point of view where I put spirituality and science together. And I, I believe that if we manage to do this, we're going to change the world. And uh, the you I, I would like to demonstrate on. this. Yeah, and that, we are that ready, we are waiting. Okay. I waited three days, day and night, I didn't see it, so maybe I get oh a chance to goodness. see it. <laughs> you <laughs> promised us every day. <laughs> I think you're yeah, both well, waiting. So, okay, right? then I can, I can uh, technically say it'll be done next week. I'll get it ready for next week, it's going to be all done. And I'll That's present good. it, um, you know, uh, for as a gift, because I thought to do it for myself and, you know, um, but here, uh, I, I think I'm going to open up and uh, it's going to be a, hopefully a joy and great news for everybody. It's kind of a, I got a, a bit of a special story, so let's see. This is like the one you went to see the Dalai Lama and you had to be questioned for two weeks. Uh, that's the after Are story. We, this is after all that experience, I actually went in Are India. Are going to question you for two weeks before we let you show or not? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you have to have the in, the uh, Inquisition, the cash Inquisition. <laughs> I the way I structured it, I, I I basically give a bit of a background of my life, and um, I got the before, the event, and the after. <laughs> it's quite simple, oh, but it, it's, it. it has, and I do a bit of a discussion that it looks like a, to me anyway. I've been adapted it for about twenty years. I've been discussing about it, and it looks like a figure eight. I basically a discussion that is really well structured, and I do it in a certain fashion. That uh, it's quite easy to understand for everybody to follow, and uh, and then at the end uh, it reveals certain surprises, and uh, it really surprised a lot of people in my way, and uh, and I've been told that what I was saying was impossible, and uh, I think I rediscover an old mystery that can be demonstrated, and if everybody's open and like uh, history and the uh, old science, maybe in the newest one, and the way I connect the two. Uh, Check that out. That's going to be my next presentation. Okay, so the question would be, should we have it as a knowledge seekers workshop? Which, Because it, it could get extended into an hour or two of presentation. Or should we have it as a special um, workshop? It's both the same. <laughs> 
It's a special, but it's a workshop, so we learn as a knowledge seeker. Mm-hmm. If you have it next Thursday. Because with yeah. this technology, you don't consider only, as I said, the physical and the scientific and the rest of it. Right. We have to bring all colors in to understand the beauty of the flower and see what it brings with us. Maybe we have to listen to other parts. Otherwise, we become people who just come here to see magic of a reactor flying or creating energy. We You've got a reactor flying there? <laughs> Never mind. I think we'll we pass on that. Have we lost him? Oops. Oh, he said the magic word and seemed to have disappeared. It's a bit of a... Oh, what do you call it? juggler? Yeah, it's better now. He He's lost a, the audio after you said the flying... Um, uh, flying reactor and the, the audio suddenly died. Yeah, well, so we don't we don't want people here to come just to shoot to, for us to show flying reactors or energy units. We need to understand the other parts of it as well. And then I yes. said, which I think that's why you disconnected us, was that uh, we we had a what do you call it? A, uh, we have an entertainer amongst us, we didn't know, and we had a, well, a juggling act with the rings, uh, in the last day of the, the last dinner we had here together. Yes. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we never understood where he came from, but uh, it says the bird didn't come out. You didn't show us the bird, Rick. <laughs> no, no, no. We saw no. a lot of rigs jumping, we saw a lot of banging and danging, but we didn't see any birds flying, Marmon says. Yes, there is no pigeons in a hat in this case, but... Uh, but um, where is the hat? <laughs> I don't even have the hat, yes. Working on it, working on, work on progress. <laughs> okay. Yes, we one day we'll we, have that. We, 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 what do you call it, we transport plasma transfer, the, the what do you call it, the, the pigeon for you. You don't should, you don't need to clear it through customs. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe a uh, Canada goose will deliver one day. Yeah, you never know. The you golden egg. And a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, shall we wrap it up for today? Uh, yeah, we are past 10.30 to end, because we're from Monday, we'll be on a full-time teaching every day. We go to, we go to, uh, as I explained before, Monday is not about teaching. We go through the knowledge seekers who have arrived uh, to understand what they understand, and what maybe we all understand on the same level as they do, or part of their understanding. This is a collective teaching, it's not just coming here and waiting to be taught. Every thought counts on how we see and how we do. The, due to some practical reasons, some of the knowledge seekers will come over the next two, three, four weeks, because of the time given was too short, and secondly, issue of visas and granting visas and attaining them takes time for some, and it was mainly to do to our failure on this end in issuing the right papers, and it had to be redone. So we'll start with maybe three, four, and five, and then as they join us in over the next four or five weeks, we add to it. So if you want to be a knowledge seeker, you can join any time because you can catch up through the recordings on the on the server. And uh, so you can pop in and pop out, if, if you like going home for two weeks, you can still teach yourselves on the, on the live streams, on the teaching courses. So, uh, it's a, as I always say, we don't want people to be here, for them and their families to suffer, it has to be the way that it brings pleasure to both sides, the humanity and the person. So, we have to keep it to a timetable of certain hours to be able to issue the uh, master degree, and the hours counts and how participated in it at the end of the day. And the bad news, as I said before, is for the uh, what we call the knowledge seekers to write their own uh, uh, thesis at the end of the day, and the only person who fails or passes is the, is themselves. We don't master or preview or, uh, what do you call it, 
peer review the papers to say if their thought is right or wrong. So in the in the structure, they publish their papers at the end of the twelve months or three years, and then that becomes as part of the library of the knowledge of the man. As long as they don't like the motion of the horse's story, everything else is okay. Anything else, or shall we wrap it up? We are past nearly two hours. When we meet on Monday at 10 o'clock. Rick, we need a, you to have access to all the animations you have in your uh, backup. Yes. Uh, for the things. And at the same time, if we can have some new, what do you call it, uh, animations. Yep, we can uh, work on whatever is uh, requested or required. And. Uh, just one second, please. Can we go live to test? Can we go live to test or not? Can we go live to test? Live. Can um, we go live? To show? To test to see if it goes correct? Yeah. He's here. Yeah, we can. We can work with that after. We can work with that after. We do it afterwards. We have to sure. test this one Monday. Okay, well, let's send the call now and we'll arrange a time to uh, do yeah. some testing there. We'll do it. We'll try to do it in the next few minutes if we can do. We'll come back sure. to you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for today's session. Thank you, Mr. Cash. And from Monday, we'll be here day and night. We go to sleep with you and we wake up with you. <laughs> I hope the dream is good. Yep. Thank, Thank you very much. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, bye. for now. Bye. And so ends the 59th uh, Cash Nolly Seekers Workshop. And once again, thank you everybody for attending.